Thank you for the opportunity to speak on this bill, the Armed Forces Tribunal Bill 2005. Sir, as uh, my senior colleague on the right also mentioned, we all recognize the armed forces of our country are one of the most highly respected, respected for their demonstrated abilities of professionalism and patriotism. Indians today from all walks of life remain inspired by the story of valor and unflinching patriotism by many names of the armed forces. Sir, I'm a son of an uh, Air Force officer myself, and I believe it's our duty to do whatever we can to continue to sustain the dignity of the services and the men and women, women who serve. So while the armed forces remain a professional and committed family, it is inevitable that there would be disputes and issues that need resolution. So far, these disputes have been settled within the respective services. In recent times, there have been increasing where the personnel have been dissatisfied with the internal dispute legal process and have chosen to appeal to high courts. This bill is aimed at creating a smoother, quicker, and a more dignified way of appeals, and I welcome it completely. I completely and wholeheartedly support the objective of the bill. I only wish, like my colleagues had mentioned, that this bill hadn't taken two, two years to pass, especially when there are so many others that have been enacted through Parliament. I would urge through you, sir, to the Parliament and Government that bills that deal with the armed forces and other services are focused on with more urgency and that we don't subject them to such delays in the future. Uh, the objectives of the bill and the tribunal are twofold. One is to expedite the adjudication of appeals, and the second is to create a bench that better the nuances of disputes arising in the armed forces that are usually very different from normal civil, criminal, or co that crowd our courts. So for these two objectives to be realized, the main issues will be that of the people who make up the tribunal and the capability and capacity to it and its infrastructure to handle the necessary volumes of cases to ensure speedy disposal. So as we all know in Parliament, our experience with some other tribunals and regulators formed by Parliament with strong support in law have been less than stellar, and I believe the lack of focus on these practical issues. Therefore, sir, may I recommend to you, to the Minister, three specific points in connection with oper operationalizing this bill. First, sir, I seek assurances from the Minister that he will staff the tribunal with only the most capable and committed people in the tribunal and the secretariat. I, will, I also seek an assurance from the minister that this tribunal will not be another part of political favorites or retirees looking for a relaxed pace of work. Additionally, I would urge him to make an amendment in section 6.1 that the chairman of the tribunal could also be chief of one of the services subject to one of the members being a retired justice. This will achieve section 4 of the objectives of the bill of fortifying the trust and confidence in the arm, of the armed forces in this tribunal. And I also believe, sir, this is a very practical suggestion since the appeal of this tribunal will eventually lie anyway in the Supreme Court. I further second my senior colleague's uh, suggestion that a consultation with the chiefs should be uh, mandatory under this bill for selecting the administrative of the tribunal. So secondly, I urge the minister to ensure that the secretariat, the infrastructure capacity, and the budget for the tribunal are planned at this stage itself to be large enough to handle the large number of cases that are already existing and that will arise <laughs> so that there are no people infrastructure related capacity constraints that come in the way of ensuring that adjudicatory work of the tribunal uh, is expeditious. So thirdly, and the last point, I would recommend that for the first one or two years of the tribunal, the ministry tracks the performance and operations of the tribunal from a point of view of proactively working to ensuring its smooth and speedy operat operationalization. Let me end by saying again, sir, that I support this bill completely and wholeheartedly and hope that the minister will take note of my suggestions. Thank you, sir.